are these people? All right. So, so this story, I, as I said earlier, I found just randomly um, over the weekend, which I think is interesting. Oh, yeah. So, who are these people? There we go. Did you have to do that though? Yes, or... I did. I gotta apparently fix Kofi. Why does everything break when we want to use it? So, okay, so shout out to Kate for for the ten dollars. Thank you. Um, so, so this story I found very interesting uh, in terms of I think the implications, as I said in the last segment, you know, hearing stuff from Palestine. Uh, being suppressed and how the Zionist slash Israeli lobby is now doing their best to kind of suppress anything regarding Palestine. Uh, we have seen it, I think, in our government. We're seeing it in terms of uh, what's recently happened, you know, on colleges uh, across the country over the last month or so. And given this article, there's been active suppression of any discussion on Palestine in elementary and high school, high schools in New Jersey. And this is significant to me. Actually, I sent this to Indy, uh, who also lives in New Jersey, but a lot of these towns that they're mentioning are towns where, this is basically the area where I grew up. So mm. I'm very familiar with these towns, many of them. <laughs> Right. And they are, uh, they have high Jewish populations. So this does not surprise me in the slightest. But it does lend itself to talking about a larger problem in schools in terms of who is really uh, pushing curriculum. And it's not necessarily teachers or families that live in these communities. It's often not donors or uh, lobbyists that work within the education system that make the call as to what is taught or what is not being taught in schools. And often that kind of culture kind of trickles down into the schools um, where not only we generally have curriculums that do not reflect the needs of our students and our communities, that we as teachers usually have to kind of modify in order to make it relevant, which takes more work to do. Um, but in certain cases, actually the actual, the uh, conscious suppression of what is being taught or mentioned in school. So um, this article is from Trufal and any article that we read, you can find in this just description uh, below. If you want to read it yourself or pass on any of the articles to your family, friends, whatever. But this is from Trufout, uh, written by Sam Carliner, uh, where he writes, K-12 schools in New Jersey are becoming a battlefield over Palestine advocacy. For months, pro-Israel advocates in New Jersey have lobbied school districts to suppress discussion of Palestine. So, whoops. So here we go. On the heels of the eruption of the university movement for Palestine and the subsequent wave of repression that has been at the center of national politics, Congress has begun questioning K-12 school districts about how they were clamped down on the movement for Palestine. Under the guise of addressing anti-Semitism, public K-12 schools may become more of a flashpoint across the country over Israel's genocidal war on Gaza. In New Jersey, this has already been the case for several months. A microcosm of these attempts to silence Palestinian voices played out in Livingston, New Jersey, on February 27th, when less than a dozen pro-Palestine activists found themselves surrounded by hundreds of pro-Israel parents and community members from Livingston and surrounding towns at a Board of Education meeting. The superintendent of Livingston Public Schools had returned from a fact-finding delegation to Israel after October 7th, which was paid for by the Jewish Federation of Greater Metro West New Jersey, an influential pro-Israel organization in North Jersey. According to its website, the organization's stated mission 
is to ensure the continuity and strength of the Jewish people, to support a secure Jewish and democratic state of Israel, and to care for Jews in need locally and around the world. Concerned that he was about to use the Board of Education meeting to put forward pro-Israel propaganda in public schools, a small group of activists showed up to make public comments about the historic oppression of Palestinians and ongoing massacre Israel is carrying out in Gaza. One of the activists at this meeting was Ro, a Palestinian teacher and organizer with Teaching While Muslim, an organization which works to include social justice, anti-racism, and anti-Islamophobia in school curricula and to protect the rights of Muslim teachers. Ro is not one to shy away from denouncing Israel's violence against Palestinians, but asked to use a nickname for this piece due to the harassment she and her colleagues have faced in the past several months. It has been absolutely terrifying to be a Palestinian Muslim teacher post-October 7th, Ro told Trufout. People are actively trying to dox you, to twist your words, to make you seem something that you are not in order to suppress you. She described the Livingston Board of Education meeting as one of the most threatening environments she's ever been in. Rose said that when the meeting was opened up to public comments, Zionist counter-protesters elbowed and tried to trip the pro-Palestinian Palestine activists on their way to line up to make comments. Sounds familiar in terms of what's happening at universities. Mm -hmm. um, having counter-protesters essentially to try and hurt and escalate um, the, the, this issue. Um, yeah. Mindy Greenspan, an anti-Zionist Jewish activist with the group SOMA Collective for Palestine, was also among the pro-Palestine group at the Livingston Board of Education meeting and witnessed elbowing. We were clearly the outsiders, Greenspan said, clearly the others. This host hostility to pro-Palestine advocacy in schools exists beyond Livingston. The Intercept reported in March that in Teaneck, New Jersey, pro-Israel activists, lobbyists, and even one member of Congress went on offense against teenagers who walked out of a local high school in solidarity with Palestine. New Jersey Spotlight News also recently reported that high school students in Camden County were suspended after trying to hold a walkout. Likewise, West Orange high schoolers published a statement claiming that their attempt to hold a walkout in November resulted in them receiving death threats from parents on Facebook. Jeez. High school students. What the fuck? As the West Orange students put it in their statement, parents on the Facebook pages West Orange 411 and 07052 posted threatening content like trying to dox us, friending rape on us, and said they wanted to kill us and parade our dead, raped bodies around Gaza. Oh. There is even speculation that the Jewish Federation of Greater Metro West New Jersey, the same organization that paid superintendents in Livingston and other areas of the state to go to Israel, see this is like so. Again, similar to so I have to make I have to uh, let me read this and then I have a thought. Mm -hmm. um, may have gotten a novel by Palestinian author pulled from the curriculum of Newark Public Schools. So, Indy, you might know this. Um, so, Indy said lots of Jewish families in living. Yeah, fun fact: I lived in these areas. Yeah, um, I went to high school in West Orange. Uh, I worked in Livingston Mall uh, in high school. Uh, and when I was in middle school, I went to school in Shore Hills, which is another uh, high Jewish population town in New Jersey. So I am very familiar uh, mm. with all of this, given this is high school for me. But in the, in the chat, you probably know this. Um, is, is this a Jewish organization? Actually, if you could go back to the slide, Reef, yep. for a second. Um, is the Jewish Federation of Greater Metro West affiliated with APAC at all? Because um, I should have researched that. But, um, but this is similar tactics to what 
APAC has been doing in terms of, um, you know, funding trips to Israel to like congressmen and now in this case school leaders to help them be more sympathetic <coughs> to the Israeli cause. You want to go to Israel? Uh, I'm probably buying them off. I know. Why? And probably buying them off to, you know, make the case to do shit like this. Yeah. Um, and he says Those probably not is like celebrities do. <coughs> mm -hmm. um, so. So he said probably not. It is like an independent. Yeah, I figured. Of a group of local towns. Yeah, I figured as much. Uh, I would have guessed if they, if they were affiliated with APAC, I would have known that. Yeah. Anyway, but. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's continue. On January 2nd, Federation CEO Dove Ben Shimon made a Facebook post claiming that after over a year of intense lobbying efforts on the part of the advocacy and public affairs arm of the Federation, Newark pulled the book, A Little Piece of Ground, from 200 Schools. The book follows the experience of Karim, a Palestinian teenage boy growing up in the occupied West Bank. Mm -hmm. In the face of backlash from teachers and community members, district officials have maintained that the Federation's charges of anti-Semitism and other claims had nothing to do with the district's decision to pull the book. When asked if he was concerned that the pulling of the book might embolden individuals or groups to target books representing other oppressed communities, Newark Public Schools Superintendent Roger Leon told Truefout he was motivated by other concerns that he declined to disclose. Actually, I'm more concerned that people would assume we take actions because of something other than academic reasons, Leon said. We are not that school district. Well, then give us a reason because it sounds kind of like you're that school district. It tell you. Yeah. Like, ugh. Jeff Johnson, a parent of two kids in Newark Public Schools, and just um, for the folks in the chat, if you don't know Newark at all, it's gen more gentrified now than when I grew, grew up just three miles west mm. from the city. Uh, but it's predominantly black, at least most of it. So this is an all-black city, pretty much, uh, yeah. akin to maybe like Baltimore. Um, so Jeff yeah. Johnson, yeah. So mm -hmm. the idea that so we'll get into this. Um, Jeff Johnson, the parent of two in New York Public, got a clear answer from the district about how the decision was made. As a parent, he finds it concerning that an organization far removed from his community, so yeah, like, Livingston is about, I'll say, like, five, six miles away um, from Newark, um, could have influence over the curriculum. As a parent, I don't want anyone who's outside of our community, other than the families and educators who are living here or working here, determining what in our schools in any way, he told Truefowl. Newark is not a community where people would have an issue reading a book about Palestine. It's just not. Um, Johnson said, despite having several detailed phone conversations and an email exchange with Leon, he feels he hasn't given a clear, been given a clear answer about why exactly the book was pulled. The Federation, likewise, did not respond to Truefout's multiple requests for comment. For years, and especially in recent months, many anti-Zionist Jews have argued that security and care for Jewish people is not synonymous with support of an ethno-nationalistic regime in Israel. Snow Mob Collective for Palestine's Greenspan shares this perspective. I, as a Jewish person, don't support Israel, she said. As far as con I'm concerned, the Federation's mission to runs counter to Jewish values and Jewish teachings and they just seek to keep people in a cult and keep them in line. Roe and Johnson both compared the Federation to Moms for Liberty, the right-wing organization that begins teaching for, of Black history and inclusion for LGBTQ plus voices in schools. 
while the organization and pro-Israel advocates in New Jersey more broadly have not been directly organizing against Black history and LGBTQ plus rights in schools, there ha are clear examples of how their efforts to silent pro-Palestine voices are eroding advocacy for these other oppressed communities and empowering right-wing organizations. Scroll down, please. Yep. The South Orange Maplewood School District has a well-documented history of racial injustice, despite the fact that these two towns generally see themselves as progressively liberal. As a result of these injustices in the schools, as well as an incident of anti-Black police perpetrating violence against teenagers in Maplewood, several teachers and community members formed a group Map SO Freedom School. Since its formation in 2017, this group has used community events youth development and educational professional development workshops and teacher organization to strengthen the school's district understanding of systemic racism, settler colonialism, and other forms of oppression. Mm -hmm. Recently, MAP SO Freedom School has come under fierce attacks by defenders of the Israeli government and military in the community and surrounding towns because the organization has held events and shared resources on social media, providing contacts of Israel's oppression of Palestinians. According to TJ, oh, that's, oh, shut up. That's my old English teacher, <laughs> TJ Whitaker. <laughs> shout, out, shout out TJ Whitaker. Uh, he was my shout English, uh, he was my English, freshman English teacher in high school. Shout out to you, Mr. Whitaker. He, like, fun fact about him, like, I, it's funny because I talk about this with my friends now, uh, mm. like, after, like, he was woke before we even knew what woke was. Mm. Like, uh, but he was very much that guy. I think he only was at my high school for maybe two years. I believe he was fired, maybe, because my guess is he wanted to promote stuff like this. And I went to an old boys Catholic school that it, it didn't necessarily line up. You, you can make the yeah. connection. But um but yeah, shout out to Mr. Whitaker. Um Good reach out. Um according to TJ Whitaker, a co-founder of Map SO Freedom School and teacher in the district since 2002, harassment of the group's members has become the norm. He said that in the face of these attacks, there's been little support within the district. One of the probably most disappointing things we experience is some of our own union members who have shared information publicly about us, who have gone to our union leadership to complain and to try and take away our freedom of speech to talk about these issues, Whitaker said. As a result of pressure from local pro-Israel advocates, the District Board of Education voted on November 30th, 20th, uh, last year to end a working relationship that the district had initially established with MAP SO Freedom School to address the district's lack of racial justice initiatives. Hmm. Of course they did. One does what's that? Of course they did. Can't have that. Yeah. That's it's bad. Um, to hold us one does not need to be in the schools to witness the backlash that pro-Palestine teachers in the district are facing. On May 4th, a pro-Israel social media user made a post in Soma Talks, a private Facebook group with 2,500 members. The post showed a picture of a classroom door in South Orange Middle School, also in the district, which had a poster on it which simply said the word Gaza. The community member who made the post on Facebook argued that teacher political views should remain outside the classroom and our children. Several group people in the group commented in agreement with one commenter claiming that the Monday radical leftist cabal, which makes up approximately 99.7% of SOMA, have an institutionalized hatred of Jews. Mm -hmm. Another claim to have sent three separate emails to a member of MAP SO Freedom School who teaches at the high school, naming her multiple times in the comments for all to see. This type of harassment in the district has not been limited to teachers. On January 12th, I witnessed roughly 100 students at Columbia High School walk out of school to determine a ceasefire in Gaza. So context, Columbia High School is the high school in South Orange and Maplewood. So yeah, not covered that. Not, nothing to do with Columbia University. University, we covered public, that. that. Yeah. <clears throat> this is a public high school in between two towns in New Jersey. Gotcha. 
Um, I stood with several parents of the students and community members outside the school grounds in solidarity with the students. A smaller group of aggressive pro-Israel counter-protesters also showed up, and many tried to take pictures of the students and community members supporting them in an attempt to imitate them and potentially expose them to further harassment. Intimidate. Another yeah. counter-protester walked around the perimeter of the field where students were gathering, using binoculars to try and get a closer look at the students. That's just creepy. It, it, mm. It's creepy, but it's like... Again, we've seen this with college students, like with college students, like this is what's been happening. So it's imagining the idea that they have to do that they're doing this with high school students. Like for the same thing. Like talk about Palestine that and then we're going to essentially destroy you, your livelihood or whatever. Yeah. I think yeah, it's just really sick to me. Um during the walkout, a rental van drove around displaying a mini billboard with a seemingly pro-Israel quote by MLK, despite the fact that MLK repeatedly condemned colonialism and apartheid during his lifetime, which we also talked about Over. here. Uh, we did a clip on that because while I can't... Well, first, I'll, I said it then, I'll say it now. We can't say... Well, MLK is dead. So we can't um, fully understand what we do know that he was supportive of Israel. We do know that. However, he also stated that we need to be very, Israel needed to be very careful of how Pal Arabs in Palestine were treated. So MLK did say that while he was alive. And the fact that we do know that MLK was very much, especially in his latter life, against imperialism and colonialism that he talked about at length given the Vietnam War, you can make the argument that, and again, a lot of the stuff that is happening now regarding Israel and Gaza wasn't happening in the same way back then. So, but we would like to think if MLK was alive now to kind of see how this assault has developed, we would think can take a guess that he would be extremely opposed to what's going on. So, yeah. but I remember that quote. So the fact that that quote is still kind of being used as justification of, oh, we had MLK, who is a black uh, social rights leader who is, who's um, very much promoting of Israel, and so you know. So if you're against him, you're an anti-Semite. Like is bullshit. So, but like I said, we talked about that quote in length here, so you can find that clip for that. Yeah. Um, in Kibbutz Soma, another private Facebook group which has since been deleted, a group member encouraged people to donate to the group, which had provided the truck, the right-wing media attack site Ac Accuracy in Media. The organization has published articles defending attacks on trans rights and critical race theory, and has docs organizers by displaying their names and faces on trucks to encourage harassment. Zoom out, please. Oh, yep. Ben Lorber is a senior research analysis at Political Research, a think tank which monitors right-wing movements. Recently, he has written about how defenders of the apartheid regime in Israel have allied themselves with right-wing movements, a phenomenon he sees playing out in the repression of pro-Palestine voices in schools. Right-wing and even centrist establishment Jewish organizations seem like they're fully on board with this push, and in doing so, they're aligning with the political right, Lorber told Truthout. The right has been gunning after basically any shade of progressism in education for a long time. And I really worry that large parts of the American Jewish community are being cons conscripted into that fight. Roe, meanwhile, mm -hmm. warned that the harassment is already affecting teachers she has spoken with across the country from New York to Ohio to Texas. They're all experiencing the same thing, she said. So, any thoughts? I mean, this is not surprising, given what we've reported on what other our colleagues in independent media have reported on, but we don't hear, I haven't heard much yet of how a lot of this oppression is kind of now trickling down into elementary and high schools now. So 
So yeah, as I said, it's very interesting that, you know, it's get, given like, this is where I grew up. Um, and people now that I actually know who are actually fighting against this, that this is a problem. But again, given that I know these towns and the high Jewish populations in these towns, um, and Indy said in the chat that Zionism is now being conflated with Judaism. So that's kind of where, yeah. you know, a lot of this is kind of sure. gaining steam. It's, I'm resident, not surprised. Resident atheists, we can get, get rid of all the religions. I'm okay with that. But, you know, I, I, I agree. Not the same thing if we're going to be, you know, consistent. So, but yeah, I mean, this is just classic. I mean, you... You've been in schooling for a for a while, you know, mm -hmm. like mother as well, right? Since I know her is in the education. Um, the but amount yeah, of like on... political Go subterfuge, ahead. like in the backgrounds of your local, <laughs> you know, high school, middle school, whatever is ridiculous. You know, people are hired and fired for what churches they attend. So. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's kind of kind of ridiculous, but this doesn't surprise me. But it is something that people should be aware of, and right. it's it's one of those things that you have an effect over. If you have right. children, uh, uh, you know, in school, like you have some say here. So, you know, I mean, an asterisk to that: you should have some say. Yes, like you're gonna have That's to go problem. to. You should have some say. Like I should have some say. Yeah. But unfortunately, our public schools are not designed that way. Yeah. Public schools throughout the country are have a motive, and you can guess what that motive is. Is essentially to push students towards capitalism. All they want is essentially good little drones. That will just go into the workforce and be good little boys and girls that are not going to disrupt the the system too much, if at all. So there might be a couple, every a few that might be disruptive, but they can't have an onslaught of like, you know, people rising up in order to fight the establishment. That's the key in schools. Um, yeah. It's to kind of keep everybody so distraught and so stressed out that they wouldn't have the willingness to fight. And so, you know, coming from my end as an educator, as I said earlier, we don't have any set, well, unless you're at a private school. Yeah. Um, and even then that might be problematic. But if you're at a public school, you generally have, teachers generally have no say in terms of what is being taught. Um, you can make suggestions or you can make um, modifications to the curriculum to kind of meet the needs of your students, but that may not always be appreciated by your administration. So if your administration is not necessarily for any modifications that you're doing to the curriculum, then you can essentially be fired for that, depending on who that person is. And as we see, it depends on who your administration slash school districts are linked to. And if you have powerful parents who are connected to a lot of these groups, as we're seeing here, they have a lot of say in terms of what is being taught. So as uh, one of the parents, Jeff, mentioned before, like he works, like he lives in a predominantly Black neighborhood. And as he was commenting... Why is it that there are groups seven miles away who probably have never been to Newark in their damn life up until maybe drive through it or take the train through it to get to New York um, have any say in regards to what's being taught in his district? I think he made a very valid point. You know, but it just goes to show you that a lot of these Zionist groups, even on a local level, are extremely powerful. And they do have a lot of say in terms of what is being taught or what is being taught. So, so 
just and I think that's something I think as a cautionary tale for all of you. Um, it may not necessarily be in school, but it could be at your workplace. So I think that's just something to be mindful of. And that's something I'm even mindful of, you know, being on Twitter. Because you see me and how very fervent I am against my anti-Zionism. And actually, I do worry about that. Because yeah. I do worry, like, if the wrong parent or the wrong organization uh, gets whiff of anything that I say on Twitter, that could also determine my job which in a way is one of the reasons why I want to leave because I feel a lot of ways I myself, I'm being suppressed in what I'm able to teach. Um, so, and teachers shouldn't feel that they should be, or students in their own right, shouldn't feel that they should, shouldn't feel suppressed in terms of seeing the things that they are kind of connecting to on social media and otherwise and having uh, feeling a way about it that they're wanting to do something about it. That's what should be happening. You know, the idea that students are, high school students are feeling inspired to protest. That's what should be encouraged. But again, it's the idea of what people are protesting for that is an issue. And there are going to be these lobbies that will strike it down. But I think it's just kind of sick that these are adults that are willing to dox kids yeah. on account of them being pro-Palestine. That, to me, is really ridiculous. And it just kind of shows how depraved a lot of these Zionists are in order to protect themselves and their so-called, you know, religion, quote-unquote. Right. Yeah, it's despicable at this point. Uh... Anyway, um, we just talking about it's why we're demonetized. You can go to codashv.com slash indie news network and help support us that way. Scan the QR code on your screen, or if you're in the live chat, hit exclamation mark donate in the chat. You can, you can get links to our Kofi there to give us some dollar reviews. If you can't give because times are tight, you can go like and subscribe, sharing the stream. <coughs> Leaving a comment, you know, we're, we're almost at 2K, so help us out. Hit that subscribe button. You know, I otherwise... Believe, I believe yeah. we got a sub nice. since we've been live. So... Fantastic. Uh, you can also go to so, Rockfin and Rumble if you look at the description below and go to our link tree at IndieNews.network. You can find all the links to all the channels and all the members for INN to support us that way. 